Good morning. Good morning. I think I may have gotten on maybe a minute early. So, and it's Christmas Eve, so I don't know how many will be on today, but we will just pray with whoever's here. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Danny. Good morning, you, you faithful ladies on Christmas Eve to get on and pray today. Good morning, Debbie, Taylor. I just Thank the Lord for each one of you this morning that are getting on to pray. Go on and share the broadcast and say, pray with us on Christmas Eve morning. Um, I hope you are having an unbelievable holiday. I hope you're having a wonderful time. Good morning, Rachel. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Eloise, good morning. Melina, good morning. Darlene, good morning. Share the broadcast, ladies, and say, let's pray. Let's finish out our year strong. We just have about a week or so, a little over a week left in our year. So why don't we finish it out really strong before we go into our new year? What an honor it is to pray every morning. What an honor. And I want to thank Laura, Pastor Laura Davenport, for praying for me yesterday. And uh, Pastor Kelly slept in late yesterday. Can you believe it? I actually got to sleep in until about 930 I felt like I had slept the day away, and then Pastor Bob waited on me hand and foot yesterday, and so I took naps, and I had a wonderful time, and we went out to dinner last night, and I had a wonderful birthday. So thank you, Pastor Laura, for filling in and allowing me uh, a chance to just uh, restart and recharge my battery. And uh, But I sure missed y'all yesterday. I, I love praying with you every morning. I enjoy the presence of the Lord. I enjoy praying with you. I enjoy seeing God move in your life. I've, I've got so many um, just testimonies where God has just touched you and healed you and delivered you. And I was thinking about that this morning. Even the, uh, the uh, word of knowledge I gave the day before yesterday, I had a lady come in and tell me that was me. And it made me feel so good to know that God is moving and answering prayers that you have. He's He's working in your body. He's working with your children. He's working in your businesses. He's working in our nation. He's working in the things that we are praying and asking him to move in. And I just honor Holy Spirit today. I, I want to spend a few moments as y'all are gathering on this morning. And I want to ask you to share the broadcast <clears throat> and ask your friends to pray with us. We, we've just got today and tomorrow. I will be praying on Christmas Day. It'll just be for a few minutes, but I will be praying, and I won't be praying long today, but um, I don't want to go a day without prayer on Monday through Friday through the year. It's a commitment I made to the Lord, and I want to honor that. Holy Spirit, we honor you today. We love you so much. We thank you for being close to us. We thank you for helping us and uh, guiding us through our life. We thank you that you guide us through our personal lives, that you guide us with our families, that you guide us with our children, that you guide us in our marriages, that you guide us in our churches and in the, the bodies, the local bodies we're called to, that, that we are a blessing to our pastors and the leaders in the local bodies that we're members of, that we're a blessing to the, to the employers that we work for, that we're a blessing to the people that we serve uh, as we, if we own businesses and we're just, Lord, we just thank you that you are helping us to be a blessing everywhere we go, that we are called to be a blessing. And we thank you that you are helping us fulfill that call to be a blessing, to make, to be a, a change agent for your, for your will, your purpose and your way. So, Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to love people. We thank you for the opportunity to speak your words over people. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to say the word of God and watch the word change people from the inside out, including ourselves. We thank you, Lord, for this year that you've changed us. You've made us, uh, you've made us better. You've led us into places of of change and repentance, and you've led us into places of victory and wholeness. You've led us into places of uh, of uh, generosity and giving. You've you've worked in our lives in so many areas. You've 
You've, you've, you've caused us to turn from things that were not bringing forth fruit in our life to areas that are bringing forth immense fruit. And I just thank you that you love us enough to just lead us and guide us into all truth. Lord, I thank you for the wisdom that you've given us. I thank you for the discernment that you've downloaded. I thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost that's moving in our lives and in our midst, in our churches, in our ministries. We thank you, God, for what you're doing in our homes. We thank you, God, that you're speaking to us through dreams and visions and prayer and your word and just the simple things in life, God, you're speaking to us. We don't take any anything for granted. We don't take anything for granted that you've done. We don't take anything for granted that you've given us. We don't take even the, even the instruction or the correction. We are so thankful for, Lord. We're thankful for your goodness. We're thankful for your blessing. We're thankful. Now, listen, I want to, I really felt led to give you some instructions about your health during this winter season when flu is rampant, Viruses are rampant, and then COVID usually, usually takes an uptick. So let me just give you some, some uh, I'm not a doctor, so I'm not giving you medical advice, but I'm just going to tell you what Pastor Callie's doing. I gargle. I take the vitamins. You need to be taking all the vitamins, and you know what to take. And then I take uh, hydroxychloroquine as well, but I also gargle um, with hydrogen peroxide, and then I take some hydrogen peroxide and swab it in my nose. And I gargle uh, almost every night, too, with um, Listerine. Anything you get in your throat, if, you can, if you're gargling on a regular basis, it's going to kill it off. Because it has to get into your nasal passages and into your throat before it can get down into your lung or get down into you. And that's where it starts. So if you can keep that clean... I think you have a better odds of not getting sick during this holiday. So I'm not giving medical advice. I'm not a doctor. I'm just telling you what I do to protect my nasal and my throat. I felt myself getting a sore throat. I started gargling, boom, gone. I felt myself not feeling well a couple of weeks ago. I started gargling, it was gone. So I wanna encourage you to just be faithful with taking care of yourself you don't need to walk around in fear. Take your vitamins. Pray every day. Speak the word of God over you. But do the precautionary things that you can do to clean it, especially if you've been in a crowd. If I've been, you know, I'm, I'm with people all the time. Pastor Kelly's with people all the time. So I take care of myself. I When I come out of a crowd, I'll wash my hands really well. When I come out of a crowd, I will, I will gargle and put it in my nose and... Uh, uh, we also use, what is it, that thing that you put in your nose and it runs through. I can't think of the name of it. But whatever it takes for you to stay healthy, you don't need to be in fear. You don't need to hide away because God's going to protect you, but you need to be wise. So that's that's just free. That's free. That's what I tell my children, so I want to tell my, my sisters that I love so much. Um, I want to read to you. I'm 61. I was 61 yesterday, 61 and having fun. And I kept saying that all day long and we were laughing about it. And when I got up this morning, the Lord said, 61 will be one of the greatest years of your life and you will have fun and you will see the glory of the Lord and I will bless everything that you set your hand to do. And I just felt his presence so strong this morning. And I wanted to read Isaiah uh, 61. This is what the Lord put in my heart was Isaiah 61. Now this is the word of the Lord for not only me, but it's the word of the Lord for you. And so you just need to claim it. The year of the Lord's favor, this is the year of the Lord's favor. So I don't care what's going on in the world around us, we declare that as we leave 2021 and go into 2022, we are entering into the year of the Lord's favor. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me because God has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. He has sent me to, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, for those that are bound, for those that are hurting, and a release from darkness for the prisoners. So he's called us to, to release the prisoners from the dark cells and dungeons that they're in, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God. So God is going to wreak havoc on the enemies of your life. 
Now, I'm not talking about necessarily people. I'm talking about the demonic spirits that may have influenced people. That may have, God is going to wreak havoc on the, de the demonic. He is going to bring f freedom and victory to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of the vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn. Lord, we just thank you that you're comforting all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes. So you're getting a crown and we are headed to crown 2022 January 13th through the 16th. I will tell you, I have opened back up the register. I have about 20 spots left. And I went on and did it. I, I, you know, I didn't want us to get past 600. But I have 20 spots left. So if, I'm going to go in and post it. So if you want uh, a spot uh, to be in the room, live in the room, you can still get it. There's still a few spots left. But then we, we've we also got an online option, and I encourage you, if you can't be there, get the online option. And provide those who grieve in Zion to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and the garment of praise instead of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. We are a planting of the Lord for a display of his splendor. They will rebuild the ancient ruins. That's what we're called to do, girls. And restore the places long devastated. We're going to rebuild the ancient ruins. They will renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. We're going to renew not only cities, but we're going to renew people and generations. Where the demonic has had control of generations and people for 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 four generations, we're going to speak the word of God, and the blood of Jesus is going to set them free. Strangers will shepherd our your flocks. Foreigners will work your fields and vineyards, and you will be called priests of the Lord. You will be named ministers of our God. You will feed on the wealth of the nations. I declare that the wealth of the wicked is being transferred into your hands. I declare that the wealth of the wicked, and I prophesy the wealth of the wicked, is being transferred into the hands of the righteous, into your hands, into my hands, in the hands of God's church in America and across the world. You will feed on the wealth of nations, and in their riches you will boast. Instead of your shame, because we've all had shame prior to the cross, you will receive a double portion, and instead of disgrace, you will rejoice in your inheritance. And so you will inherit a double portion in your land. I prophesy a double portion in your land, and everlasting joy will be yours. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wandering and wrongdoing. I'm sorry. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. In my faithfulness, I will reward my people and make an everlasting covenant with them. We're not just some people that God just shows a little mercy on. We are in covenant with the Lord. We are in covenant with the Lord. The descendants will be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them will acknowledge that they are the people the Lord has blessed. I declare we are the people the Lord has blessed. I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me, clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom adores his head like a priest, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the soil makes the sprout come up and a garden causes seeds to grow, so the sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise spring up before all nations. That is Psalm 61. Psalm 60. Uh, I'm sorry, that was Isaiah 61. Now we're going to go to Psalm 61. The Lord gave me Isaiah 61 and then Psalm 61. And I love what uh, I, Isaiah was the promises of the Lord. 
And I want you to read those over and over over your life. It's the promises of the Lord over you. And that is the prophetic word over me for this year. And that is the prophetic word over you. Now here's Psalm 61. And this is where God is talking to us about prayer. He's talking to us about intimacy. Okay, Psalm from the director of music uh, with stringed instruments of David. David wrote this. Okay, hear my cry, O God. Listen to my prayer. How perfect is this? Listen to my prayer. From the ends of the earth, I call to you. Lord, I call to you morning, noon, and night. I call as my heart grows faint. When I get weak, Lord, I call you. Lean, uh, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. God, take me to the places away from the stress of the world, away from the, the, uh, the fray, and, and take me to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the foe. Lord, I thank you that in this, this year and this coming year, you will be our refuge. You will protect us against the enemies of our soul. And we will rest in your presence and power and protection. I long to dwell in your tent forever and take refuge in the shelter of your wings. For you, God, have heard my vows. You've heard my cry. You've heard my inner cry. You've heard the pain. You've heard the, the joy. You've heard the, the worship. You've heard it all, Lord. For you, God, have heard my vows. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. Lord, we fear you. We don't fear you in the sense that I'm scared of you, but I respect you. I honor you. I know you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and I honor you. Increase the days of the king's life. Now, this was David praying about his life. But I say, Lord, increase the days of Callie's life. Put your name in there. Increase the days of, of, of Pastor Bob's life. Increase the days of our life, Lord. His years for many generations. God, we ask you to, to let our lives affect many for generations and to live long on this earth and to accomplish everything you've called us to accomplish. May he be enthroned. May he be enthroned in God's presence forever. Lord, may I be enthroned in your presence forever. May I be completely saturated by your spirit. May I be passionately in love with you, Father. Appoint your love and faithfulness to protect him. Then I will ever sing in praise of your name and, I, and fulfill my vows day after day. God, let us be women that fulfill our vows day after day. We fulfill our prayer vows. We fulfill our giving vows. We, pre, we pre, uh, prevail on seeing people saved. That we are so sold out to you, Lord, that whatever you ask, we will do. In Jesus' name. Now, there's some footnotes, and you can read that later. But, Lord, I thank you for the opportunity today on this beautiful, beautiful Christmas Eve to worship you. And, Lord, we just declare and decree that this next, today and tomorrow, are going to be such beautiful holidays. We're going to finish out our holidays in such joy and such love. You're going to move in power and in might. And I thank you, Lord. You know what is coming ahead of us. You know what 2022 holds. You know the hairs on our head. You know how many, you know how many hairs are on my arm or in my eyebrows or on the top of my head. You know, you know what my you know my frame. You know everything about me. And God, you know what we're facing. And you also know that you're going to protect us. You've already decided that we're going to see the glory, the bounty, and the protection of the Lord. And no matter what is going on around us, ladies, you can see a 1,000 fall at one side and 10,000 at the other, but God is going to protect you because we declare that we are protected and the hand of God is on us. And we're going to see not only the protection of God, the goodness of God, the glory of God, but we're going to see the salvation of the Lord in America. And we're going to see so hundreds and hundreds and thousands of people saved and delivered and set free. God is turning the church of the living God, setting us aflame with his power. 
And we are called to go into every sphere of influence and make a difference in this nation. We are called to go into every social economic status and make a difference. Be a light for Jesus. We are called to stand for righteousness. We are called to love our brothers. We are called to, walk, to stand before the Lord daily in prayer and allow him to wash us with his presence and his word. We are called to love, 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 love. That's not a weak word. That's a strong word. It takes a strong faith to love people that don't love you. It takes a strong faith to do good to those that do evil to you. It takes a strong faith. It takes, a, it, takes a, it takes an incredible love for Jesus to stand for what is right when someone has maybe not done you right or maybe someone's done you evil. But God's going to help us. We're going to walk in the fullness of what God has called us to do. Now, I want to prophesy over a few of you today. I want to prophesy over a few of you today. Uh, there's someone here uh, with either the middle name Mary, or it's not a name you go by, but it's in your name. Mary is in your name. It's not a name you go by. So uh, it may be in your legal name, but you go by another name. And I see God, uh, I see you, you've been crying, uh, you've been distraught, and you've been, uh, you felt like the battle was too big and there was no way you could get out of it alive. But I prophesy to you that there are a host of angels that have been sent to rescue you and to change the scenario. God has already begun to change the scenario. And whether you can see it or not, if you will begin to declare that I am free, I am healed, I am delivered, and this, this, this thing that was meant to destroy me, God is going to turn it for my good. If you will prophesy, your name, your legal name has Mary in it, but you don't go by that name. Now, whoever you are, I want you to message me because I want to be able to pray for you privately. But I just declare in the name of Jesus, strength comes in, in, into your body, hope comes into your mind, and you will see the salvation of the Lord. You will see the salvation of the Lord. You will see the salvation of the Lord. There's somebody with the name Elaine, uh, and I think that might be your middle name, Elaine. And you may go by it, I don't know, but it's your middle name, Elaine, and God is healing your body right now, Elaine. You've been having uh, trouble with uh, terrible headaches and vision problems, and uh, it's, actually, it's actually depressed you, and so God is healing you physically, and he's healing you emotionally, and your name has Elaine in it. I think you go by Elaine, and it, I think it's your middle name. God is healing you, Elaine. He is healing Elaine today. He is healing Elaine. Healing Elaine. Lord, I thank you for healing her completely. Uh, I also hear the voice of the Lord saying that there are several on, of you who 2021 was a tough year financially, like a really tough year, like beyond any, not just where money was tight, it was tough. Like you thought maybe you'd lose homes, cars. It was tough. You lost jobs. Um, God is going, 2022 is going to be the year of redemption for your finances because you never quit doing the right thing. You stayed in covenant with God. You stayed in covenant with your tithing. You stayed in covenant with God. And God says, I will, I'm in covenant with you. You have, you, I am your I'm your refuge. I'm your redeemer. And uh, I, there's three, I, I think there's three on this broadcast that had like really devastating hard times in 2021. And God is going to turn it in 2022. And God is going to redeem everything you lost. And the devil's going to have to pay. He's going to have to pay 10 times. He's going to have to pay for what he took from you. And Lord, I just thank you for the blessing of the Lord over all these handmaids today. 
on Christmas Eve. Now listen, I'm not, we're not going to stay on here long. Pastor Bob is getting ready to come and take you through communion. We're going to let you go within about five minutes because we know it's Christmas Eve and y'all all have family and holidays, so we don't want to keep you long. Tomorrow, I'll only be praying 15 minutes in the morning. Just 15 minutes because it's Christmas Day. So I love you so much. Uh, the blessing of God is on you. You are called and anointed to do great things. Pastor Bob. Tomorrow's Saturday. Oh, it's tomorrow Saturday? Yeah. Okay, good. So I don't pray on Saturday with y'all <laughs> anyway. <laughs> okay, I forgot. <laughs> I pray by myself. Oh, <laughs> uh, we're looking at Luke two, uh, 22. Uh, Jesus doing the Passover. We're going to look at what happened right after that as well, but right before the Passover. And what that right happened after. So in Luke 22, verse 15, he says, With fervent desire, I desire to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. So he knew that this particular Passover was a game changer. It was a life changer. It was something new. And so it was different from all the Passovers they'd had before. Jesus had 33 years of Passovers that he had practiced with his family. This was different. This was going to bring in a new era, a new kingdom, the kingdom of God in a new way with a new covenant through the blood of Jesus. It was epic, <laughs> if you want to say use that word. Um, so they didn't realize how big a deal it was at the time, of course. But all the Old Testament had been pointing to this day of what covenant means, of what substitutional sacrifice means. It kept foreshadowing this, this idea that God had in his mind that one thing could be substituted for another, that guilt could be put on another, but it was only temporary because the the offerings were never, and the sacrifices were never good enough until Jesus came, that is. And he, being completely man and completely God, was the perfect sacrifice, the perfect representative for mankind. And so it was epic in that way. And he says, I fervently desired, in other words, there's a passion in his desire there to eat this last supper, the Lord, the, what we call the Lord's Supper, the communion, which was originally the Passover, uh, with you before I suffer. And I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it's fulfilled in the kingdom of God. In other words, it's not, even though it began the new covenant, the fulfillment of the new covenant is not until we get to heaven and have the final supper with God. It's what we call the marriage supper of the Lamb where it's a wedding supper because we are marrying Jesus Christ. We are engaged now, we're making ourselves holy and we're cleaning ourselves up. Uh, our souls need transformation, our thinking, our way of living is how we're cleaning ourselves up so that we can look good when we get to this marriage supper. But we're, we're gonna have a table, There's gonna be, we're gonna communion with God in an intimate way we can, we can start now. I don't say we don't have to wait till then, but it's a special time. And so he's looking forward, as he's saying this, I'm looking forward to fulfilling this in the kingdom of God. So it's an interesting um, time. So he took the cup and he gave thanks and said, This is the vitus among you, for I will not drink of the fruit of this vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took the bread. There we go took the bread and he gave it and broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So Lord, we remember mm -hmm. the sacrifice, the suffering, yet the joy, yet the anticipation you had of what it meant for this sacrifice was a, was a powerful sacrifice. We thank you for your body. You're willing to lay it down. You're yes. willing to give it up. You're willing to take the pain, yes. the suffering, temporarily so that we could have eternal life. Thank yes. you, Jesus. We receive what all that you purchased, the, the resurrection life of God that flowed through you and raised you up from the grave is the same resurrection life power that is flowing through us today. We declare and giving life to our mortal flesh, 
renewing it, strengthening it, driving out all sickness and disease, the light of God and the life of God to every cell and every organ of our body yes, this, this morning. We thank you, Lord Jesus. And then he say, uh, likewise, likewise, he took the cup af uh, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. And so, Lord, we thank you for your blood. We thank you for the life that it represents. The blood yes. spilled out, poured out, represents the temple where the blood was sprinkled over the altar, or the, the Holy of Holies, the, um, the mercy seat where the blood was sprinkled out over by the priest and symbolizing that uh, in that, um, underneath that mercy seat was the commandments that all the people had broken and the blood was covering it where God couldn't see. He no longer saw the commandments that were broken. He saw the blood of Jesus, his son. He looked forward in time and saw that that blood was going to be Jesus. Yes. And so Lord, we thank you for the blood that Yes, that there is, you are a high priest in heaven, that there is a mercy seat and that Jesus' blood is sprinkled there. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that we're covered and we're forgiven and we're accepted and we're loved this morning because of the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And then he, he washes their feet and tells them, because they began saying, uh, first he said, Some, one of you is going to betray me. So they begin questioning who that person would be. Then they begin saying, who's going to be the greatest? And he said, you're thinking like men. You're thinking like the world system. It's not about who's the greatest person in here is the servant of all. And so he taught them by example and washed their feet and did what the servant should have done, which is wash their feet when they came in and because they took their sandals off and they walked in the house. And then he showed them that. And then he predicts, um, no, he said something before, after that, which is important. He says, um, you are those who have continued with me in my trials, and I bestow upon you a kingdom, just as my father bestowed one upon me, that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. So interesting, He's, he says, because you've been with me and through, gone through the trials with me and will continue, there's a, there's, you're gonna be uh, sitting on thrones in my kingdom. He said, I bestow upon you a kingdom. And he has bestowed upon us a kingdom. We are representatives, ambassadors of the kingdom of God wherever we go. So we have been bestowed the authority of Jesus' name and his blood and we've been given authority to represent his kingdom and Lord help us to represent your kingdom and your character of that kingdom today well. And then he said, Simon, you're gonna betray me. Simon, you're gonna do what you didn't think you could do, but I'm praying for you that you won't let your faith fail. You may fail in your actions, but your faith doesn't have to fail. So Lord, we thank you today that you encourage everyone with the, your, what you were willing to do for us and that you knew Peter's limits and that he would be tested and that he would fail in the natural, but, not, but eventually he would turn that failure into uh, success in the kingdom of God because failure is not the end, only when we give up. So Lord, we can learn from our failures. We can learn and it's expensive sometimes, the lessons, but it's worth it's valuable, so it's worth the cost to learn to be better. So Peter learned a very important lesson that during that week, that is that he wasn't all that he thought he was, that he wasn't as strong as he thought he was, and that he needed to be more humble and depend on God more. And so Peter did learn a valuable lesson. It was worth, it had, did have value. Even if our failures, even our mistakes can be costly, but it's not the end of the story. We can learn from them, and they do cost us, but learning is valuable. And if we apply it and change because of it. So we thank you, Lord, that even in our failures and even in our mess-ups and mistakes that can cost us, they have not wasted. And that you're able to figure that in on the equation. You know our lives, and you can, you can still redeem our lives and make, uh, use that for, our, for your glory. So it was uh, Peter 
becomes more humble because of that. He becomes more recognizing of his, that his love for God is not as strong as his um, self-preservation and that he needed to be willing to deny himself and die himself to take up his own cross. And he did. He became that. And we're becoming that. So, Lord, we thank you that we're, because you showed us what sacrifice is, that we would be willing to also sacrifice ourselves, our self-life, our self-denial. Would be uh, We'd be willing to do that for others and for you and for your kingdom and for your will. And, Lord, whatever it costs to do your will, we'll be willing to pay that cost this morning because you showed us by example. Lord, we love you. We thank you for your your wonderful love for us and your goodness to us. You are our provider. You are our source. It's not the job. It's not the money in the bank. It's you put it in our hands and it can come and go from our hands, but you're the source. So we thank you this morning. No matter what our financial situation is, you will provide because you're a good father. You take care of everybody and everything and you take care of us. And we trust you in that in Jesus' name. God bless you. Have a good Christmas. We'll see you next time.